Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Traffic and Trade Group, and this is your end of day, end of week video. And uh, what an exciting week. Something, I would say, a little bit for everybody. Uh, well, also, um, this is obviously today's performance and percentage uh, change from open, which I always like to go through at the uh, at the end of the day. I like to do this in the, in the middle of the day, too, but just kind of uh, always interesting to see what outperforms, what underperforms, and so on and so forth. But we'll also look at the performance for the week, is too, which is pretty interesting to see some of these groups. So I'll get to that in a second. I'm excited to go over the week's performance i'm excited to get to the weekend even though in new york city there's like a tropical storm that's going that that that's happening right now and i'm in my new york city office and i did bring my umbrella into today but this commute home is going to be rather interesting because uh, the water might be coming up from from the from the floor rather than uh you know, that might be getting me more soaked than anything else because I do have an umbrella. So it's going to be interesting. Maybe I'll send a picture or two uh, as I make my way out of here, but in no rush right the second. So um, theme of the day, we got, um, I don't know. So rotation, is it upon us? We'll have to see. I'm going to go through a couple charts in here, but it's amazing how quickly things can change. Here I was talking about the great performance and the, all the call buying and AMD yesterday and the repeat call action. And today that, that name is a dud. And another group of stocks, uh, you know, happen to outperform as well as you know tesla which has been absolutely on fire I, I want to see what the performance was for tesla for the week but so a lot to talk about so let's talk about first the um the averages and and how they performed um my one of my phrases from yesterday was you're killing me smalls because the small caps were getting hit again and uh, they came back today so they bounced a little bit the question as I go through some of this performance because you can see the small caps outperformed for the day they were your leader in the indices note they were the laggard yesterday but they were up 1.6 percent also the diamonds which have kind of struggled a little bit uh, were up 1.4 so there was your big performance and overall it's not like there was a ton of profit taking in the queues they were still up on the day they just weren't the big outperformer um spy finished you know kind of right in the middle of that which i would expect and uh, up one percent for the week interesting what happened with the bonds today too they started off it was kind of a more risk-off market in the morning bonds were up like about a half a percent um, i've been long them and once i saw them switch from green to red i'm like well that's you know i don't need to be in these and watch these things go down um, it's a nice profitable trade let me get out of it and we'll see what, where these bonds go and they finished down a half a percent and, and you could see they finished down you know there was some selling there in the bonds so kind of interesting i mean i'm not sure if this was all this is something that i've talked about before but i'm not sure if this was all about you know the uh, gilead coming out with uh, some positive news about their drug treatment not a vaccine but a drug treatment but we've talked about this before in terms of if any positive news comes out you're going to see a rotation right that was the prediction that i said in yesterday's video i don't like to give I, um, I, I believe I said that I was either said that in yesterday's video or I said it in the member pre-market session. I don't like to give predictions. Predictions stink, right? People who come on TV and they make predictions. Everybody likes predictions, but it's so much easier just to follow price action. And let's face it, um, the reason why most predictions stink and are horrible is because nobody knows right no nobody nobody knows has a crystal ball and is going to know what's going to happen but i do every once in a while make to like to make logical um i'll call them predictions for lack of a better word but um you know if they and what i said yesterday was that if they do come out with and make some progress on a a vaccine or some type of a drug you're going to see a major rotation because there's been a lot of areas that have really stunk it up um, and have been underperformers. And then there's been a few groups that have been absolutely stars, right? I mean, huge, uh, you know, outperformers. And there's good reason for that, too, other than just that they're the... Um, you know, they're hiding places. They're, they're just really strong, good companies. Um, but when you have such a disparity between names that are so unloved and so hated that that type of good news 
um, is really going to cause some, you know that that kind of either drug news. And again, this is just you know, Gilead. Is, it's just a study, but you could kind of see and feel what it's doing to the market. So just keep that in the back of your mind because that's something that if you do, it should be, um, I was quoted in CNBC earlier this week and I said it's, it's, like, a, it's like the flip of a switch, right? So if they're, they're going to make some more progress on a drug, you're going to see a whole bunch of areas that were um, you know, underperformers and you're going to see money flow back into them again because they're so under-owned right now. So that's the story and I think that's part of the reason that I will say this, um, that why the banks were up 4.8% and I think you just have to be mindful of that. And then if you look at the bottom of the list, you know, things like biotech, you know, really strong areas, software is going to take a break. You know, again, we saw this. Um, so let's let's look at a couple charts. And by the way, this was the S&P performance, basically just, you know, straight, straight up. And um, a couple things that to note, um, again, a lot of like, you know, I don't want to say false moves, but, you know, we did dip pretty decently into the value area for the week. And we've come back, you know, really strong and we're now out outside of value. And there's a VPOC up here that I basically have made mention to all week long. We got very close to it on Monday. By the way, we got back to Monday's high today. Um, and then the back and forth action today looked, you know, pretty weak in the beginning of the day. So I don't know. You know, I mean, is it all the Gilead announcement that really got us going? Because we looked pretty darn weak this morning until that news came out, right? This was right in here. Um, when that news came out and we got into value, we checked back and, and you know, and then and then we went. So um, very impressive. So again, I don't know if that's all it, but um, I, I think you just have to be mindful of that. And if we look at some of these rotations, right, let's start with IWM for a minute, because I think that's really the question. And we'll look at maybe the banking ETF. But, you know, here was what we saw a couple weeks ago. And then obviously we stalled out. And of course, if you want to look at it more dramatically, you could look at the KRE. Um, we, you know, we saw this rotation, as many people called it, including myself, a little bit of a dash to trash rally, um, where we saw a lot of things that um, were really under owned. You know, a lot of the uh, a lot of the travel names, which again I just think are going to be a little bit challenged, but from time to time they're going to bounce. So let's see if we, you know, continue to kind of see see that through, um, you know, to the upside. And I think that also we've got earnings season that kicks off next week. You know, I don't know. I don't think there's a big short interest, you know, in terms of XLF. Uh, because if you look, like even Wells Fargo, which is like the worst one, there's not a lot of short interest here. There's a, it's only about 1%. But XLF, you know, if you look at the short interest, you know, perhaps there's a decent amount, I guess, of short interest here. The um, Yeah, it's not much. The short interest ratio is only 1.7%. So it's, it's not a crazy amount of short covering. It's just I think people are really under own the banks and just haven't wanted to be in them, including myself. Now, again, do I really want to be in these things for more than a bounce trade? We talked about this a lot in, you know, we give a Tribeca Trade Group, um, in addition to the Q&A sessions that we do, which is here, right? We do these Mondays and Wednesdays, or um, we actually did the, the Wednesday one on Thursday. I also do a, a midday video on Friday, just to kind of you know, thoughts ahead of the weekend, which we, I talked for about an hour today, but um, I don't want to be in these banks personally for more than a bounce. And a lot of names that are in downtrends, they're going to bounce and sometimes they bounce more than usual. Uh, but then it's, it's very difficult for names to get out of a downtrend, right? So they can bounce in downtrends, but um, who knows, like, you know, how long the bounce lasts. So they're good for trades, in my opinion, for bounce trades, but not really investments. And really, that's what options are, are really good for, uh, because you could play, you know, uh, potential bounces in these things. Um, and you don't have to really be in a big investment, right? So you, you can only lose the premium when you go into an, in an option trade. And you can decide on how much, of course, you want to put into a trade like that. So um, I think that's a great way to kind of play some of these bounces if we continue to get that next week. Um, and I think, I, you know, I don't know. It could be more that we're, we're going to need to hear more about, you know, Gilead's treatment. Um, but I... 
think as they continue to make progress and, and you know, other companies are coming out with drugs, you're going to see this type of move from time to time. So um, a couple names that I'll just kind of throw out that I thought were interesting. You know, what's, what's also interesting is we do talk about this. Um, you know, I switched my watch list this morning around um, because once I saw that Gilead news, I'm like, okay, now the value trade is basically on. And, you know, I start looking at names. So this is what I put out at 9.07 in the morning, right before we started the pre-market session. Because, again, I had to change things around. But J.P. Morgan was on the top of the list. Um, I actually traded XLF today. I, I don't know why. Um, I was the first call buying that I saw on the tape. And then we saw repeat call buying in J.P. Morgan. But I think J.P. Morgan would have been a better trade. But you've heard me talk about, literally, you've heard me talk about J.P. Morgan now probably every day this week, just saying that probably, Probably this was setting up for some type of a bounce. Well, you got it today, up 5.5%. It can continue. Um, you know, I think it could maybe continue up here. Morgan Stanley is another, like a better looking chart, in my opinion. The only thing I don't like about Morgan Stanley is on the one hour time frame, you just did take out this VPOC here. So we'll see how this digests this. And I think it's still rallying here after hours. But you just did take out that version point of control on the one hour time frame. Sorry, I'll back that up so you could see it. So it's got to get over. So if you're thinking about getting long Morgan Stanley, here's an easy trade for you. Go long if it goes above 50 and uh, use your stop at like say 49.50. Uh, but I would wait till it gets above that VPOC and then use that as a stop. Again, it's just a one hour VPOC. It's not one on a daily. That one I would be a little bit more concerned. But if you go back to this daily chart, this thing looks pretty good. Right. So uh, the other thing is we're seeing all kinds of names run into their earnings report. These brokers are tripping over themselves, increasing their price targets, something that we've talked about all week long. It happens almost every quarter where they go ahead and do this and it causes these these huge momentum uh, moves in these groups while they're tripping all over everyone telling each other to, to rate, you know, raising their price targets. It's just one of those things that happens. And then, you know, for it will probably leave very little of those names like, like Netflix that are rallying. You know, it's going to leave, it's not going to leave an earnings trade, right? Um, because it's going to be priced in. It's the same thing with Amazon that's going on too. This crazy move in Amazon, there's not really going to be anything to do on earnings except maybe sell premium, in my opinion. Right. And of course, everything that we're going through today is for uh, in these videos is always for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations, anything like that. Um, a couple other charts that look pretty interesting. Again, I always, always like to gravitate towards strength. So that's why I'm showing you the chart of Morgan Stanley, which is a stronger, you know, again, look at the difference between the regional banking ETF and, and Morgan Stanley. Which would I rather own? I'd rather own the, the one that's doing better. Um, I know some some uh, newer traders have, you know, it's a that's a difficult thing for them to kind of look at. Sometimes newer traders, when they're not used to like following a trend trading system, which I talked about in, yes, in yesterday's video, they always want to buy the cheaper one. I always want to buy the strength. I always because the stronger names stay strong. The weaker names usually stay weaker. Um, but if you look at BlackRock too. BlackRock's just, if you want to take a shot at something that could be looking to break out, it's a name to watch for next week, watch a break over 558. And this one reports, I think, towards the end of next week. That's on 717. So maybe you can get a run into earnings for this one. But this looks pretty, pretty darn close. Other names, like if you start to look at, if you start to go around, this Visa, I don't know why this has been such an underperformer, but saw some nice call buying in this thing. You do have, now it's kind of, I don't love this chart, but the one thing that I do like is if you, you have the bottom of value in the 50-day moving average lining up. So there's some call buying in a name that I don't really understand that, that well, why it's not performing as well as like a PayPal or a Square. Perhaps it's because people are not spending as much. Um, they're saving a little bit more and PayPal and uh, Square have the edge on them a little bit. But I always like buying Visa on dips. Um, another one that I've been talking about is Home Depot. It looks very close to making a nice move here. Um, 
the name that I traded today was um, which we which I caught and I've been kind of setting up the last couple days was Domino's Pizza. I know this is not an easy name to trade in options. It reports next week. I just went and bought stock um, and made a really nice trade. This thing was up 3.3%, hit one of my targets, and the next target I have is up at 410. So playing that one. Again, the options are a little bit difficult because they're wide. Um, there's not a lot of volume in them, but I think really, really interesting. Um, the other name that we set up you know, pre-market uh, was Tesla. And so a lot of traders traded this one. I traded stock in this one. But what, what got me interested was just the digestion in the coil um, on this thing. I was like, wow, this thing is really kind of coiled. And that's how I set this up this morning um, before we did the, if you go to our Market Webs channel, you know, that, so this was one name that we reviewed in the morning, and I did take this as a trade. Uh, I said a bit coiled, a nice consolidation after a big move. I didn't think the thing was going to go up 150 points. Yeah, 150 points. you got to be kidding me. Um, you know, people are really like, <laughs> if they're hitting this thing nicely, like it is making, you know, their month, possibly their year, uh, because of how much you can make when, when a name does this. It's pretty remarkable. I was making a joke earlier about, you know, maybe the best trade would be if you, this morning, if you put on a Tesla trade and went out and had a liquid lunch and came back in the, in the afternoon and looked to see where your option prices were, <laughs> because you could have made a fortune, like, purchasing like a, an option that expired today it's just crazy it's just crazy stuff and and that's what this market has right now is basically crazy stuff going on what did this thing do for the week up 27 percent 27 percent in one week unbelievable i am still long this in the tactical portfolio i did take a target in this thing but what an amazing move unreal um tesla and and what a what a nice thing to happen for, for traders here at the at the end of the day. Um, so that's a couple other trades. I talked about the banks. Uh, also, you know, the other thing that I wanted to mention, you know, the last time, if we, if we talk about the last time that all of these value names outperformed, remember it was a lot of the travel names too. This was back in the beginning of June. Now, did the software names and did those did those other areas get hit really hard? No, they just basically took a, a tiny bit of a breather over here, just consolidation. So keep an eye on that because I think right now, if you've been long and playing a lot of these growth names as I have and as a lot of uh, momentum traders and trend traders have been, what you really want is another consolidation in this group you know, maybe the price to come in. And again, this is just the software ETF, but you could bring up any, any software name because the whole group has been doing this. It would be great if this group comes back and maybe checks back to the 20 day moving average and gives a chance for some other groups to rally. Again, I'm not saying that they, like I don't want to break down and complete rotation out of this group, but just some digestion because let's face it, they're extended. They do need a pause, right? It's very healthy for groups to do that from time to time. So, you know, we'll see how this plays out, but this, these groups are, they're overcrowded. So I would, you know, be, be a little bit mindful of your exposure and be um, as nimble as you can be. The other thing in the, and I'll, I'm going to go over this week's performance too, but um, the more nimble that you can be, you know, like I said, I changed my watch list around this morning and it helps to not be in, you, the more, the less positions that you have on, the more nimble you can be. And one of the things that like I've been kind of advocating and saying that's what's worked for me is not trying not to get tied up in too much exposure because the market is giving you opportunities every day. So you don't have to sit with a bunch of positions um, if you're really quick and, and, and you could pick up on these moves, or if you're in our trading room, I'm going to find them for you. Uh, and as long as you are not carrying a huge book, you can kind of rotate in and out of these things and catch the momentum as, as we go. But again, you know, even though it was today was more of a value day, I mean, look at Google. Um, this was another name that somebody asked me about in the... Um, in, in the midday session that we had. And I structured a call spread for this going for next week because this could be another name that runs into earnings. Every other growth name 
has run into earnings. So, you know, why not this one too? Um, so really interesting there. Okay, so I think that's enough. But, I, but again, um, you just don't, I think the more simple that you can keep it with your positions, uh, because again, you don't want to be a part, like if, if the market does rotate out of certain groups, you know, you don't want to get caught in managing, having to manage those positions while another group just goes crazy to the upside. And I, and again, I think that would be great for the market. And it's what we've been seeing now for the last couple of months is just this rolling bull market. It's take, taken place in a lot of different sectors. Uh, but it would be really, really great, I think, for the market if, if IWM outperformed a bit for next week. Uh, and and they kind of that group kind of ran with the ball. So um, again, somebody asked me on Twitter, do you know could they go? Yeah, I mean you know 140, 144 would be the top of value, but even just a little push, you know, for for like a couple days, I think would just be very healthy for for the overall market. So that would be your resistance in the 200-day moving average. And again, I don't need this group to go up to like 155. Just a couple days of outperformance, I think, would kind of just be very good for, for the market. So that said, so again, keeping it simple, um, not having to, you know, keeping on maybe a little bit less positions than more and being nimble so that you can kind of move quickly into the next group that we see rotations into is the formula that I'm going to have. Um, so we'll see what we're, we get. I have no idea what's going to happen next week, but that's kind of the way I'm leaning. Uh, Take a look at the performance for the week. You could see even despite to, you know today's, I know I'm talking about the small caps a lot, but they were down for the week and um, and the Qs were up 4.7%. So again, very, very hot. And um, I, I would like to see this flip around. Again, so that's wishful thinking for next week. Um, we'll see how that goes. Look at the emerging markets up 4.7%. Uh, IFA which is uh, international develop was also up and gold and silver, uh, sorry, gold and bonds were also up. Take a look at the, the, so again, this is something that we just haven't seen this, this, this year that much. Um, well, we actually have seen it in the Chinese internet names, but look at the Shanghai up 10.6%. China was up 7.8, 7.5% um, emerging markets, which have a lot of China in them. Even Brazil was up 4.5%. So big week for the emerging markets. Really nice to see. We also saw, if you look at the Euro stocks ETF, pretty nice um, call positioning in this. And this does not look like a bad chart. Talking about something that would be interesting to see a rotation in, uh, this was the FEZ order. Again, this is FEZ is the Eurostox ETF. And I know sometimes that, that scares people, right? They're like, oh, you know, I don't want to get long Europe. But if you look to see what's in this ETF, it's not going to be that um, scary, really. It's names like SAP, which is a software name, is the biggest weight in this. Now it's a pretty diverse basket, but ASML, ASML, which is a which is a semiconductor name, right? So you have to kind of put this in context, because again, people look at this and they think, oh geez, they think low growth. I don't want to get into Europe. Europe is such a headache. But if you look at some of these names, these are pretty good quality names. A couple of them. LIN is one of the better names, I think, in materials. Um, if you look at that chart, I'm not going to go into that right this second. But um, but you could see your fam you know, Unilever is another name, Siemens, Sanofi, right? So there's there's a lot of healthcare in this group as well. So interesting trade. So again, that's the way you have to think about it. The only thing that you do have to be cognizant of is you have exposure to the euro when you're in one of these ETFs. But in very interesting uh, order that we saw today. All right, so that's um. That's international, but again, I'm very excited to see international uh, outperform like that. Uh, if we go back to the U.S., and, and again, this is a China, obviously China name, but the Chinese internets were up 8.4% for the week, and um, solar names up 10.8%. Huge week for the solar names. I've been long this TAN ETF for some time, breaking out back to 52-week highs. You got a VPOC uh, coming out there because this was a... If you kind of look back, um, the solar ETF is still way under the underwater from there. But amazing how quickly that just happened. Basically a week, right? So that's why I like these little breakout, these little consolidation. And that's why I'm looking at things like, you know, the, the pattern repeats. DPZ, and I just looked at BlackRock, right? 
I love these little patterns like this. And you just have to kind of wait for them to trigger. All right. And, um, and again, even what's crazy is even though the banks were up 4.5% today or something like that, they were still down for the week, down 2% for the week. Home builders had a big week. Um, so again, I'm watching Home Depot. Um, the semiconductors had a big week too, up 4.3%. So what a week of performance. This was really fun to trade. Again, I talked about that a lot in yesterday's video. If you're not a member of Tribeca Trade Group, get involved. We'll be putting out, oh, let's see how our watch list did. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got some wine on deck over here. Good, good bottle of wine. Uh, let me see if I have, because every weekend we put out a watch list and I do take pride in trying to beat the market, even though some names I put on are just basically names that I'm watching. But um, let's see how we did for the week. Yeah, uh, seven, five. So here's a watch list that I put up 5% for the week. So outperforming outperforming again so yes if you're not a member of tribeca trade group it's only 129 dollars a month um you can go right to my private twitter feed and you can sign up there to see what it's like but i put out two videos every weekend i put out a macro video where i talk about you know a whole bunch of things like the vix and the advanced decline line s p positioning um about you know half an hour 45 minute video and then i put out another video half an hour on you know the watch list that i'm looking at for next week along with triggers so things like you know the the dominoes and um blackrock I'll, I'll tell you i tell you exactly the level to watch um and where to set your alert all right guys thanks for watching have a great weekend and i'll see you on monday